Hello everyone. Uh, so today I'm going to talk about the Euclid Euclidean vehicle uh, routing problem, uh, capacity version in random setting. And uh, uh, what is the uh, capacity vehicle routing problem? In uh, this problem, we have a depot, a point, and uh, a set of n terminals, uh, and uh, uh, and uh, an integer k. The uh, goal is to uh, travel through all the terminals and uh, go back to the depot. But we have an additional uh, condition on the capacity. That is, uh, each time we uh, start from a depot and uh, uh, go through at most uh, uh, k terminals, we have to go back to the depot then start again. Um, so uh, this is uh, quite uh, practical in, in the applications. Of, uh, for example, uh, a delivery man can only uh, deliver a, a fixed number of, say, uh, packages each time. Then uh, they need to uh, come back to the source and uh, carry more uh, packages with them. And uh, uh, for example, uh, in uh, this case, uh, okay. <laughs> in this case, in this rectangular, uh, the uh, depot is uh, um, labeled O here, and uh, uh, all other black dots are uh, terminals. And uh, uh, suppose the K is 4, then uh, we can uh, draw three tours. Each goes through uh, at most uh, uh, four terminals and go back. And uh, uh, in this case, the total length is minimized. So uh, this is a fundamental problem in uh, option, uh, option, uh, operations research. And it is uh, also a generalization of the uh, travel, uh, traveling salesman problem, TSP, where uh, the uh, where if k equals to n, then the capacity uh, constraint uh, doesn't exist. It just uh, travels through all the terminals and go back. It's the TSP for uh, n plus one points. And uh, we know that for TSP problem, uh, it is NP hard. So um, it's very hard to find a polynomial algorithm to find the exact solution. Um, but uh, uh, how where, uh, can we find an approximation solution? This is a big question in the uh, field of study here. Um, approximate uh, solution is a uh, uh, set of tools satisfying uh, the capacity constraint uh, such that uh, the total length is some multiple of the optimal total length, and that multiple is the uh, approximation ratio. We want to uh, minimize the approximation ratio there. And uh, um, hopefully 1 plus epsilon or something is the best that we can do. But, uh, uh, there are different uh, versions of these problems in the literature. And uh, there are problems for general uh, distance and uh, for Euclidean plane and uh, other uh, graphs, graph matrix there. Well, we consider the Euclidean, uh, Euclidean version of this problem, where the distance is just the Euclidean uh, distance and uh, it's uh, on a two-dimensional uh, space. For higher dimensional space, it's uh, quite similar. But in this subject, we usually consider two-dimensional things, probably more practical. And uh, uh, we consider the union, unit demand. Each has the weight one. 
And uh, for the random setting, we mean the terminals are IID random points in a unit square. On the other hand, the depot is arbitrary and can be any point and uh, doesn't have a distribution, just uh, arbitrary. Um, and uh, the question is that uh, can we find the 1 plus epsilon approximation in polynomial time where the degree can depend on the epsilon there? Um, at this time, it's very tempting to uh, guess that there might be some law of large numbers. If n goes to infinity, uh, probably those those configuration doesn't really matter and uh, uh, is converged to uh, fix the uh, fix the optimal uh, distance um, up to an epsilon factor um, but uh, it's uh, s still an open problem mathematician might like this this converging law description because it doesn't involve any uh, algorithmic uh, language there. Um, however, it's uh, uh, kind of at the same level of difficulty. Uh, we can ask if there is a convergence law uh, fixing a depot and let n goes to infinity and uh, let the uh, technical constraint, let the ratio between k and the square root of n be a constant, hmm. converges to a constant. <laughs> and uh, uh, beyond that, uh, we can also consider uh, even more specialized case where these terminals are not random, but uh, just uh, follow a rectangular grid. Now suppose that we follow a rectangular grid where the uh, ratio between the sides are fixed. Then uh, we can ask whether this sequence of real numbers converge. And this is still an open question. And uh, uh, previous result in the random setting, in uh, 40 years ago, there's a two approximation. This is actually for the general uh, metric, general distance result. And uh, in uh, 2007, there's a 1.995 approximation. And recently, Mathieu and Joe gives a 1.915 approximation. And our uh, result is a 1.55 approximation. Um, and uh, it is, uh, we, we propose a different uh, algorithm. It's called the uh, sweep algorithm. And uh, uh, this, in the sweet algorithm, we first uh, sort the uh, terminals according to the polar angles. So these are all terminals, and uh, here is the depot O. There's uh, just the O, and uh, we cut. the terminals into uh, a bunch of groups such that each group has k over epsilon, about k over epsilon terminals. And uh, in each group, we compute an uh, 1 plus epsilon, a near optimal uh, solution, and uh, add them up. So the sweep algorithm is uh, very intuitive and uh, uh, it's maybe um, closer to the real practical algorithm in industry. And uh, uh, we make the conjecture that uh, this weak algorithm is probably 1 plus epsilon approximation and prove that is actually at most 1.55 approximation uh, in the random case. Um, 
there are three things to consider. The first, when, uh, why this sweep algorithm has polynomial complexity, especially for the step three, computing the one plus epsilon approximation, why it is polynomial. And the uh, second thing is uh, the uh, uh, ratio it divides to two things, the upper bound. Uh, we, we need an uh, We need an uh, upper bound for the uh, cost of the sweep algorithm and the lower bound on the uh, op optimal cost. And uh, also, uh, I would also explain why we propose the new algorithm instead of using the uh, old one. So first, let's address the first problem. Uh, the first problem is why is the third uh, step is uh, has polynomial complexity. To do that, we need some uh, results from the Euclidean TSB. And uh, uh, in 1989, the time when the computer science is not very popular at that time, so uh, there's a mathematical result on the uh, strong convergence law in random setting. It's uh, it, the proof of that uses a technique called patching. The patching operation. So uh, suppose we have a point set. Uh, uh, suppose we have a plan region S, and from S we select the ID points. And we uh, partition this S to two regions, S1 and S2. Um, at the same time, we're also partitioning the point sets there. Then uh, a TSP tour for the points in S and the, and the TSP uh, optimal TSB distance of S1 and S2, they have a relationship. They have a linear relationship. It's uh, because suppose it intersects this cutting line multiple times, we can, there's no, no different color. Okay, <laughs> we, can, <laughs> we can modify, thank you. <laughs> we can uh, modify, this portion, adding some, uh, adding some uh, segments uh, here so that we get a, a tour on this side and also a tour on this side and uh, uh, connect it here so it uh, uh, gives us a tour in S. And uh, the patching cost is at most linear with respect to the boundary. And uh, uh, in the case it doesn't intersect, maybe we, we need to uh, connect it with them. But in the random case, uh, uh, they should be fine. So using the patching, we can cut the, cut the uh, set, the cut the region, the measurable region uh, into small regions, then uh, we compute a TSP in each region, connect them together, and uh, get a one plus epsilon approximation. And it actually also gives a, a strong convergence law with uh, more detailed analysis. And uh, um, later, 40 years ago, uh, Arara and uh, Mitchell independently found a generalization of the previous result. It's in arbitrary, uh, in the general Euclidean setting, we can also find a one plus epsilon approximation. So um, the difference between the first result and the second result is that uh, in the first result, we know there are, uh, well, everywhere, 
but in the second result, we can have uh, sparse structures. So maybe the points are here and uh, only one point here and uh, something here. If we do a uh, patching like this, like a grid uh, shape, then uh, the patching cost is too big. Because, you know, when there's nothing here, we still do a patching that's very uh, ineffective. In uh, this case, they uh, came up the uh, way to make use of this uh, sparse structure. They use the first the random randomize the position of these lines and uh, uh, keep track of the number of intersections. So uh, we have a horizontal, okay, horizontal lines and the vertical lines, and uh, the number of intersections of a tool to uh, uh, with respect uh, intersection number of intersection points of the tool and the the, the horizontal uh, lines and the vertical lines is uh has a relation with the has a relation with the length of the of the uh tsp of the tsp tool there so if the tsp the optimal cost is uh small the number of the intersection is also small then uh, when we don't have much intersections, when we got zero, we don't cut it here. Uh, so, uh, say, we, we actually do, uh, let's, let's draw, draw horizontal and the vertical ones. Uh, so if we have, if the length of uh, TSP2 is large here, then we do an, uh, another cut. If it's a small, then we give it up. Then uh, we get certain structures from the point set. And uh, from uh, that structure, we uh, do a patching uh, along, the, along the boundary. And uh, uh, somehow with some uh, more detailed analysis, it works. And uh, how is it related to our sweep algorithm? So uh, in the third step, uh, we are doing a sub-problem of the CVRP, where the number of terminals, mm, where the number of terminals is a uh, constant times k. So, uh, so basically, we are we are doing like a constant number of tools. So, in the case of a constant number of tools, we can do a patching for each tool, and the, the patching cost is at most a constant times the uh, complexity in, in, in the uh, patching cost in the uh, Aurora's algorithm. And uh, the, the rest also follows the, uh, say, bottom-up computation, the dynamic programming stuff. <laughs> So it's a slight generalization of the Aras uh, algorithm. And uh, actually, it is now 20 years ago, but uh, uh, now it found applications. So that's good. <laughs> and uh, uh, the next thing is, is to find uh, The next thing is to find a better bound, a better lower bound on the uh, optimal cost. So we first uh, uh, review the previous uh, lower bound. 
uh, in uh, 40 years ago. So uh, in the Hamovib and the Cairns uh, result, the optimal cost is at least uh, one of the two costs here. One is so-called the traveling salesman uh, tool cost, the TSB cost. It's just the, the length of the uh, optimal TSP of the depot and the, the terminals. And the radio cost is defined here. It is two kth of the sum of the distance to the depot. And, uh, and uh, it's not hard to prove those results. They are all corollary of triangle inequalities. Uh, the optimal cost is at least the radio cost. The optimal cost is at least the TSB cost. It's true for general distance because it only relies on the triangle inequality. And uh, uh, from that, in the same paper, they proved that uh, there exists an algorithm th that uh, realized uh, uh, re realized the cost, uh, uh, radio cost plus the TSP cost. So in this way, they proved that this algorithm is the two approximation. So the Where's the eraser? The iterated for partitioning, it goes with this. So we first uh, find a, a TSP tool for the terminals. And uh, take a random point, take a random starting point uh, in the terminals, connect it to the depot, and uh, uh, actually connect the depot to this point, then travel until we find uh, k, we find k terminals, and travel back, and uh, goes to the k, the k plus one terminal, until two k, and go back. So this is the the iterated tour partitioning, and uh, you can see that uh, the uh, cost is exactly radio cost plus the TSP cost, or not exactly, but almost. And uh, our generalization on this is we define a uh, one parameter version of the radio cost and the TSP cost. The uh, for any positive real value of R, we can define the radio R cost, which is two case of the sum of the minimum of the distance to the depot and R. And the TSP cost is the TSP uh, R cost is the regular TSP cost on the on the exterior of the circle distance equals to r. And our theorem on the lower bound down of the optimal cost is that for any value of r, we have optimal cost is at least the radio cost r, radio r cost plus the TSB r cost. And when r equals to zero, that reduced to the uh, TSB cost. When r equals to infinity, larger than the diameter, then it uh, uh, goes to the radio cost. And uh, for some where chosen R, I will elaborate that later, it uh, gives the uh, it gives the better lower bound on the op optimal cost. And uh, yeah, this this actually is very very general. That doesn't really need any Euclidean things there. It's also a tri triangular, triangle uh, inequality. 
And uh, uh, let's prove this theorem. The, uh, we have the so-called structure, structure lemma. That's uh, a name in con conventional name in this field of study. <laughs> Consider a single tour. A tour that uh, goes at most uh, k k terminals. A single tour that v s denotes uh, the uh, set of terminals visited by by this tour, and uh, c is the circle with radius r centered at depot, and uh, t is the intersection between um, the tour and uh, the exterior of C. Then we have the length of the single tour is at least uh, the two case of the sum of the minimum of the R and the distance to depot plus the length of T. And by summing over all the tools, we just um, kind of get this uh, radio cost, uh, radio cost, uh, radio R cost and TSB R cost. Um, actually, we also need a pa patching along the circle. It's, uh, it's uh, small in the random setting, maybe also small in other settings. And uh, the proof of this lemma goes as follows. So, uh, it has two cases. Uh, one case is T is not empty and the other T is empty. When T is not empty, then the length of this tool, the, the whole thing, is at least 2R plus the length of the outside, the green thing there. Because we need to reach the exterior and uh, get back. It's at least 2R plus the rest. And uh, the 2R is equal to this one. Uh, and Okay. Uh, okay. Fine. Uh, two R is uh, equals to uh, two over V S times the sigma of R, uh, and uh, V S is at most the k, and the R is at least the minimum of R and the, uh, with something else. It's simple. And uh, uh, the next case is T is empty, and in this case, the length of the tool S is at least two times the maximal distance. We need to reach the maximal distance and go back. And uh, that is at least the average distance, two times the average distance, at least uh, this quantity. Again, Vs is at most r, and the distance is at least the minimum of distance with something. And uh, as you can see, it uh, doesn't involve Euclidean and the random stuff. It's just a triangle inequality. Um, okay, okay. Now we have the lower bound of the optimal cost, then we are uh, going to have an upper bound on the cost of our sweep algorithm so that we can get an approximation ratio. The sweep algorithm, uh, as you remember, we have one, two, three, three steps, and the, the only place that can, where, where we can have additional cost is in the angular partitioning step. If the co optimal cost of CVRP is linear with respect to this partitioning, angular partitioning, then it's equivalent to say that the sweep algorithm provides an 1 plus epsilon approximation. However, we cannot prove that statement. Uh, in, um, for the TSP cost is linear with respect to any partitioning because of patching, but uh, uh, for CVRP, we cannot directly patch uh, some, some stuff. The sum of the lenses stays the same, but it, we cannot uh, like balance uh, every, every tool, the length of every tool. Um, 
if someone wants to uh, do that, maybe they need to come up with a quantity that uh, goes approximately uh, the same level, and uh, uh, that quantity maybe is uh, behaves well with patching, or we can prove it's just linear. And uh, the upper bound, we use the uh, ITP's uh, upper bound. The optimal cost is, of course, at most uh, uh, the cost of the, the iterated uh, tour partitioning cost, which is almost uh, the sum of radio cost and the TSP cost. And we know that by patching, the TSP cost is linear with respect to any partitioning. And the radio cost is also linear. It's just by definition, it's linear. And uh, we use okay, we use uh, this inequality for each group. The solution is the sum of uh, the near optimal solution in each group, which is at most the sum of the radio cost and TSP cost in each group. And uh, that's almost the, the sum of radio cost plus the TSP cost. As you can see, we <laughs> recover the same upper bound as the ITP. But why don't we just use ITP? That's because in uh, 2022, Mathieu and Joe proved that uh, uh, the ITP is not a Peters. It doesn't give a 1 plus epsilon. Maybe, maybe something. Uh, it doesn't give a 1 plus epsilon approximation. Because ITP is just the ITP cost is just the radio cost plus the TSP cost, and uh, for a square they can construct a better, better tool there for some instance of the CVRP in random setting. They uh, do a TSP TSP in some rectangle here. And uh, when it goes back, it also covers some points there. So some of the resources are used twice here. And uh, uh, this, this behavior appears at least a cons constant fraction of them that uh, uh, in, in that case, they proved that uh, uh, it cannot uh, go below a certain constant. But, uh, but we believe that uh, the sweep algorithm may be a 1 plus epsilon approximation. Um, who knows? <laughs> Just because we don't find any common examples. OK, now that we have an upper bound on the cost of the sweep algorithm and the lower bound on the optimal cost, we derive the approximation ratio, 1.55. And uh, we are going to find a value of R, such that the ratio between the radio cost and the radio R cost and the ratio between TSP cost and TSP R cost are both at most 1.55. Before that, let's first prove a strong convergence law. So uh, let uh, n goes to infinity. The quantities appeared in the inequality, the radio cost, the radio r cost, the TSP cost, the TSP r cost. They all converge to a simpler model, strongly. Um, 
who, who cares? <laughs> and uh, uh, let V be a uniform, uniform uh, really random point in the unit square, and the radial cost and the radial R cost converge to these quantities by the strong law of large numbers. And the TSB cost and TSB R cost uh, converge to the uh, uh, beta times square root of n times the area of the corresponding region. This is the corollary of the BHH uh, result in 1959. In this, uh, after this uh, convergence law, we reduce the inequality into a two variable inequality. These two variables are the coordinates of the depot O. Because everything else cancels. Like n, k there, when we take a ratio, they cancel. Beta n also cancel. The only variable is the coordinates of O. Then we're going to choose a value of r, which is also a function of the depot. And uh, there's no particular reason to choose this one. And we tried a lot of candidates and uh, uh, try to find the best uh, approximation ratio while keeping the uh, formula simple enough. And uh, this is our choice here. It's for uh, four third, um, three fourths of the uh, average distance to the depot. And uh, to solve the two variable inequality, the two variable inequality are listed here. Let uh, R be, uh, R be uh, the formula we choose. Then we have uh, these integration inequalities. To prove this, we first derive a closed formula for the integration. It's a little surprising. It actually has a closed formula. And, and because this thing is linear in the, the distribution of V, we can cut the uh, area into the signed summation of disk sectors and uh, triangles. And uh, the only hard integration to find is, uh, is here. The distance, average distance uh, to uh, average distance in the right angle, the triangle. Mm. And uh, this is an integral found by Stone in 1991. Mm. Can, can be an exercise. So with the uh, closed form formula, we can uh, express uh, everything in uh, functional composition of the log function, the trig function, square root, and the arithmetic uh, operations. And uh, uh, in this way, we can verify any given depot, the value of any d given depot very fast. And, uh, then we establish the Lipschitz continuity. When we verify a point, a location of depot, we want also want to uh, automatically get the, the uh, value, the, 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 the bound for the neighborhood. When O is shifted by a small distance, then, the, of course, the distance is also shifted by small distance. This, is, this the first one, it, does, it has a good Lipschitz continuity. The second one, this difference is at most uh, uh, proportional to the boundary of the, uh, of the shape, the length of the boundary of the shape. And, uh, that boundary is a uh, boundary of the convex region. So the peri uh, perimeter is well bounded by distance, say. And in this way, we uh, establish the Lipschitz continuity. And uh, then uh, we, if V is 
uh, if no, no, not B. If the dipole is far away from the region uh, of the uh, far away from the square of the origin of the square, anything is far away, then then the the uh, circle of distance R. Uh, radi uh, the circle of the radius r doesn't intersect the square, so, so the, the inequality is trivial in this case. Otherwise, we can uh, build an epsilon net and uh, verify the, each location of the depot. And in this way, we prove this inequality and get the 1.55 approximation. Errors. Um, there are some ways they can uh, get this ratio a little bit better. For example, we can actually combine it with the with the previous uh, the one point nine one five approximation combined with their technique, and uh, also we can define a two parameter version of this. Radius cost and TSB cost, we can do like hmm, radius R1, R2 cost, say something like that. We can also uh, do the inequalities a little bit better, maybe change the 0.75 to 0.74, that gives a little bit, bit better value. Um, maybe that would give us like 5% um, to 10% off, I think. But uh, let, let's keep it simple, as this is uh, our result here. Mm, okay, any questions? So, uh, so you say that uh, you have a cost for the computation, which is on n power dash of epsilon. And, uh, is it, uh, I mean, is, uh, is it a true issue or not to compute uh, if your f of epsilon is uh, extremely big? Ah, uh, this... Uh, so, so uh, is it possible to compute truly in this power of uh, The power is maybe... Ni... Let's see... Maybe near linear, oh, okay. so maybe like uh, n log uh, to the sum power of n. But uh, there are also a there are also a large constant on the front, so like f epsilon times that, maybe on, not on the top of n, but as a, as a multiplicative. Okay. But it's so not power. not very practical in <laughs> if you follow the theoretical line. There are definitely no. Uh, not not very practical in this way, but uh, but the idea of the sweep uh, sweeping uh, our sweeping algorithm is uh, quite uh, uh, useful heuristic when designing a practical algorithm. And practically, k is smaller from, with respect to n or k and n or so same kind of size in real life applications. Uh, in real life, there are multiple cases in real life. This is this is a very general model. It can cover many practical applications, and uh, uh, theoretically speaking, if k is much k is much smaller than square root of n, then the radio cost is much bigger than the TSP cost. Otherwise, if k is much larger than the square root of n, then the TSB cost is much larger than the radio cost. So in that two case, just, uh, uh, just this result would give the 1 plus epsilon approximation if it's larger than, uh, say, goes to infinity or goes to zero. In, in those cases, it just gives the 1 plus epsilon approximation. So the interesting case is 
k over epsilon, uh, k over square root of n goes to a constant. That's an interesting case. And did you study other distribution on other domain, other than uniforms on, on the two? I, I think the, uh, I think the, uh, one of the main contribution of our work is this uh, structures, uh, new structure theorem. And uh, uh, for the inequality, we just uh, uh, use different shapes and it definitely gives the different values, right? Yeah. Uh, at some point, if I got it correctly, you mentioned that you can have more R can have R1, R2, right? You can modify it. Uh, yeah. But, and you said this uh, is going to give you a better um, approximation, or, or not? Maybe a little bit better. Yeah, that's especially like in certain, certain instances of k over square root, root of n, that, that might be helpful to give a diff little bit better. For general thing, I don't, I don't know. Maybe, just a maybe. I mean, in general, I think 1.478 is uh, doable. <laughs> Other questions? Thank you.